Hey everybody, how's it going? We are in store at Just Games Rochester in upstate New York. Back with another paint night kit. I'm Rook. I actually have, we have people here in store painting alongside me today. This is the Chimera paint kit. So for those of you that have seen the previous ones, pretty standard, uh, very similar um, paint, everything included in the kit. Typically, you know, with any other painting stream, we'd see all the other external tools, the wet palette, the uh, the base holders. But the point of this, this is to show you that all you need is everything that's in here. And this is an amazing value for what you're getting. You're getting 12 different paints. Um, I still have the paints from paint kit last year that are still wet and I still use. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open this up and it's going to be a pretty chill stream. We're going to paint along and uh, answer any in-person questions. I'm here with Shane and Chuck. Some avid painters. So we'll see, we'll see what we, uh, what we got. All right, right off the bat, you can see, right? Pretty similar. So they, they use this plastic um, as a way to kind of be like a makeshift palette if you don't have like anything like say you're starting from the beginning You even have like the cute little cup for water. We have our own water cups and paper towels. We cheated That's the only thing that we used outside the kit, <clears throat> but Number of paints here we can open up and you can see kind of the theme they're going for here with the chimera uh, Let's see if I can get this kind of sample here on the camera a lot of reds and blacks some browns kind of like dark earthy tones here So we're seeing let's see we have White and black, dark vermilion, burnt red, chocolate brown, orange brown, cork brown, pale sand, old rose, basic skin tone, green gray, and German camouflage beige World War II. I love the name for that one. They had that for a different one too. And it's like, it just doesn't seem right in the theme of fantasy, but oh well. And then of course, standard, uh, we have your starty, starter multi-purpose brush. Uh, this is WizKids product. Um, oh, one thing I also mention is that because it's a WizKids product, it's already primed. You don't have to go through the priming process with this one. And we have the fine detail brush, and we'll be switching between the two throughout the course of this. And I might use this palette, but I'm a big fan of kind of wet blending on the model and using the model as the palette, so we'll see how much we use this. And I know people don't tell you, they tell you not to do this, but you really shouldn't dip right into the pot to paint your model. Which is why you'd use something like a wet palette or even kind of using something like this. But honestly, like the past four that I've done that are these, I haven't found an issue of kind of clumping or, you know, putting too much on the model to obscure any detail. So I'm going to keep going with that. We're going to see if it causes a problem for us. We're just going to shake these. It's a workout. It's a full workout. All right, here's what we got today. Not as big as the Dire Troll, which I think I've painted two of for the store at this point. That's, that is like a three-hour job. But uh, this looks pretty cool. And I think this is the first one that's uh, in this paint kit that has like a detachable base, which make it easier to kind of paint. Yeah, what do you, how about that? Usually like... It's a pain in the butt. They got this in two parts. Oh, they got the little tie things here. This is the hardest, most embarrassing part of the stream. Shane, what events are you running? Um, so Shane's here. He is uh, kind of the event guy for, you know, it's not just painting. People actually play games with these. So what is, uh, what's going on? Sigmar Warhammer. Yeah. I've seen there are a couple of nuts on Facebook for Crisis Protocol. It's a great game. Yeah. Actually, I got into it when I started working in it. Oh, okay. It's a really fun game. All right. So, Legion, uh, do you rotate weekly or do you kind of do stuff yeah, like. I try to do. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> 
do two events a month. Two events a month, okay. Cool. So usually, if you just had a tournament and you're a leisure player, you'll wait two, three months. Okay. You should have something. Anyway. Although I will say, in December, it's going to be, we're probably not going to step too much, especially in December. Not so much in December, gotcha. People stop coming out once it gets cold. Yeah, I get you. Well, that's cool. Hopefully it, like, inspires people to try multiple games instead of just, like, waiting around the two months for their game. But, you know, I get it because it's a lot of models. You yeah. got to you gotta prepare. War Cry just came out? I haven't heard of that. That's cool. I love skirmish games. It seems like less commitment. You know, like, uh, I would definitely... Uh, like kind of like the ten model games, or and there's a number of I mean there's a number of kind of mini mini agnostic I guess games where you can kind of use anything. All right, well we so we have the base here and it looks like the the chimera sits right here on it at the end. Okay, so easiest way I think is just going to be kind of holding it like this, and then we have the uh, the actual base that it glues onto, which we'll do later. The kit actually doesn't come with glue, so you'll need your own glue, but um, everything else is going to be done. Oh, yeah, Chuck's got glue. All right, Chuck's got glue. <clears throat> All right, so what are you thinking about starting with? What are you thinking about starting with? I was thinking the wings, too. Yeah, let's do the wings. I saw a couple... <clears throat> I saw a couple finished pieces where they used... They had, like, bright green wings. So I guess you can use some of these, but... I'm gonna try and go for that reddish black. Does this uh, does this snap in? It doesn't. Okay, so it's kind of just like a. You probably gotta glue it. You had to glue it. <laughs> All right, we'll keep it. Uh, we'll keep it original right now. All right, let's go for red and black then. Let's try and stay to the model. So first thing we're gonna do is kind of get a base coat. We're gonna start with dark colors, so that we can kind of. Put on some lighter ones as we go. Multi-purpose brush. And I usually fray the heck out of these by the time it's over. But a lot of times you can keep using this brush into models to come. Okay. I'm going to grab the burnt red. And let's just start putting paint on this. Up, Dragon Mosh. Moth wings confirmed? Yeah. Yep. They are pretty mothy. So, how many of these have you done at the store now? How many of these have I done at the store? Um, this is probably my fifth or sixth. Okay. okay. You said it's been about eight or so. So, I've now actually cut them. The first one that I did here was the Ogre Zombie, which was October 2020. So, I moved up here. I was in Florida. And I moved up here. Uh, during the pandemic, because my family's here, I have uh, two really little kids. And so I moved up here like July 2020, was able to break my lease and everything down in Florida. And the first thing I wanted to do was I was big into a lot of TCGs, and I just wanted to like get to know a game store. And so I, Just Games obviously closest to me, and I really like Matt. And uh, I was like, you know, I wasn't a painter before then. I was like, look, I just want to do something for you. You know, I just want to do something for you because I love the, I love the space and I love the industry, and obviously the, the you know, I want to be, do more than just show up and draft magic. Yeah. So then he was like, we really need a painter, and then I just started throwing my time at it, okay. and it's been really fun. So you really only been taking a paint for a couple of years. Now. It's been a couple of years, yeah, yeah. Right. Got the burnt red here. Yeah, this actually looks really good on its own. But we can start kind of blending some blacks in here. I noticed that kind of close to the tips, you see some blacks.
Yeah, this covers pretty nicely. And you see there's just a little bit of detail, kind of ridges on the wings. You don't want to cover. Pretty busy for a Saturday. I think. <laughs> oh, is this co it's Commander? Okay. People seem excited for the event in September. I saw that the professor like shouted it out. How cool is that? Really? Yeah. That's awesome. That's the best scenario. Oh, that's cool. It's gonna be off-site. They did some events at the what's the like? It was like a lounge. Knox. Knox. Yeah. I know we do a lot of pre-release events there as well. Yeah, I mean, I still haven't been over there, but it looked cool. It's an interesting partnership. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I haven't been to and I know is super, super close here is the Player Zone Bar. I feel like that's right down my alley. But, yeah, there was a... There was a bar in Florida called 10th Level Tavern that, like, it would have, like, rock band Saturday nights and, like, smash tournaments and... Whereabouts super in Florida, Fort Lauderdale. I've been to Orlando in Daytona. Oh, Orlando's yeah. fantastic. They have a place called Cloak and Blaster. It's like a bar restaurant... Same thing. Super cool. Love Orlando. Alright, let's try some black here. Let me just get this nice kind of wet with the uh, red. I mean, this looks great on its own, but let's see if we can't kind of add a little bit of detail and depth. Dip into our black. Um, do I want to go that dark right away? Yeah, let's try it. Just a little bit on the brush. And let's just try and... Let's just try and work some in. Okay, a little bit of wet blending there. Yes. Yeah. Regarding the painting, I feel like the skirmish games are, and I tell this people a lot, are a lot more suited for your kind of like more hardcore painters because you have a lot more time to like insert identity. And yeah. Exactly. It's not as cookie cutter. I like that because you can like, I mean that yeah, that's that's the name of the game because then all of a sudden it's just so personalized. Yeah. Right. It's table ready. Table ready, you know. I love painting table ready. I had to, um, when I started painting, my father-in-law was doing a D&D campaign. Whoa, that's too much black here. Let's try and work that through. My father-in-law was doing a D&D campaign. And he's like, you're into painting now? I uh, Can you paint 30 goblins for me that he bought from, like, Amazon? And I was like, yeah, sure. Okay. And I did, like, a video series on it. But um, I remember it was, like, ended up being, like, me at 3 in the morning, like, frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> like trying to knock out the last eight and I did them like groups of four so they kind of looked they looked different in clusters there we go look at that kind of hope the camera can see that they kind of like black and red kind of blend right there really nice gotta do the underside too but definitely what we're going for gonna leave us open to use some of the dark vermilion maybe some of the old rose and we can get these kind of the, the, the bony parts right here and get that a little brighter but it looks super nice so far it's really good colors these are all Vallejo I think WizKids uses specifically Vallejo. I'm a big Citadel fan, too, for, like... I don't know. I painted Space Marines with Citadel paints, you know, like the, like you get a kit. Yeah. Um, and I didn't even have to use a wash. I was like, this... How could this look any better? Well, I mean, especially if you're, like, dry brushing a side. Mm -hmm. You can make them look really good in very short periods. <laughs> yeah. That's table... I mean, table ready. Looks great. But, yeah, no, with the skirmishes. Yeah, because you can show up with... I mean, I think that I saw a skirmisher, a skirmish game, and a guy showed up with uh, the painted models from the freaking Legend of Korra board game. Like, using those, like, how cool is that? You can kind of insert whatever you want into it. Those are 
the first time. So there was a video thing a few years ago called Not So It's Like Your Parents Are Dead. Which one of the guys? I've heard of Knox, the game. What was it for? What was it on? PC. What's what, what was the time? What was the year? Two thousand. Okay. It's cool. So WizKids has released a bunch of these. Um, great, but obviously something's working. I mean, I think that the price point alone, the fact that you're walking away with 12 paints that you, I'm not, we're not using the all of these on this model. You could buy like four more $7 figures and, and just paint them with what you got here. What, what was the price on this? 25, 20, 25. That's pretty good. You think about how a bottle of Citadel alone is $7 or something like that. Yeah. People in general really seem to like the more Primed. Primed, yeah. In the and some of the content I've done where I'm I'm doing Space Marines or even those like off brand goblins, I there's that section where I have them all taped to like a long stick and I'm just I got the spray can primer. Oh boy. You can skip that part. It's super just new person friendly. We did this at Strong Museum of Play, we did the Dire Troll. I think that was in April. And that was really positive. A lot of feedback. We had like, must have been like 40 people there. I think I was going to be at that one though. I think I got sick. Oh, yeah. We were talking about it. was the first one we did there. And I was, yeah, really surprised with the turnout and yeah. the engagement. You had a couple of ringers in there that are like, somebody was an art teacher and like painted their troll like bright orange and it still looked great. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's cool though. Yeah, the store's uh kinda of getting a good iteration of this pack. I like that. I like that so much. I know that I mean the owner of Just Game's super big on kinda of like the charity aspect and the kids aspect for sure. Something that a lot of other LGSs might just kinda of pander more towards, you know, the thirty year old still playing Yu Gi Oh! kind of stuff like that it's a good direction that was one of the reasons why i liked i i was uh gravitated to this store in the first place because i have a two and a half year old son and we just had a daughter she's two weeks old thank you yeah she let me my wife let me sneak away for this it's super zen i need All right, let's try and do the same thing over here. We got the, the burnt red, it's still a little wet. Get some black and let's try and mix that into some of the wings here. If you feel like you, whoops, I applied too much black. Just work through it, work through it. And of course, this can be whatever color you want. That's nice. You know, it was something that I also wanted to do. Because, like, you can see how easy it is to kind of get all this together. I don't think this has ever been done, but I, I come from a background of like, uh, I like the fighting game stuff. And like, I don't think anyone's ever streamed like a Magic Weekly local, you know? Has it been done before? Yeah, like, you know how there's like a table one, obviously people with the highest ranking, that's like the stream table, you know? For sure. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. I think there's potential there. Yeah, I'm your guy. I would love to do that. Go one step further and have commentary. That'd be hilarious. 
Commentary is fun. Um, I'm, I'm super into Yu-Gi-Oh! Speed Duel, which is like... It's not traditional Yu-Gi-Oh! It's like, uh... They essentially kind of reset it. You ever play the mobile game? Like the Duel Links? It's kind of like that, but a much smaller card pool. And they like... It's physical, and they release it kind of really slowly. But like, every week I do, um... An online local. And that I stream. And like, that works. That's super fun. That's digital, but... Always been super into that. I know that Digimon's taken off. I tried to I tried to keep up with Digimon when it came out, and I fell off super hard. I have like a Black Blockers deck from like last October that I've been told is like I might as well just throw it away. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've had some uh, some Digimon events in the past. I think we had one last weekend. Yeah, you know Achan. Yeah, he's the big, he's a big Digimon guy, yeah. We have uh, that Discord, a lot of them kind of hang out in. I uh, know, this is kind of hard to see guys on the camera, but we're just doing the underside of the wings. We can do the same thing, you know, we can do kind of this black. There's so much room for creativity here that we can open ourselves up to. That's the one thing I love about the monsters for D&D is like, you know, they didn't just get out of the bath. Where have they been? You know, are they filthy? You can throw brown. I can throw brown all over this and it, it works. You know? Yeah, that's the point. Bonus points, you can use them all. It's easy to fall into like two colors, but if you can use them all. Right now, we're just keeping the base coat on. The goal is to get rid of as much gray as you can, because I'm notorious for, like, seeing a spot and having to come back to the red. The, uh, this is the burnt red. Yeah, start with the dark, so that it gives us an opportunity to kind of throw light source on it later. Oh man, Chuck's over here with the like the mine little miner's headlamp like you're working on a cell phone. <laughs> That's so smart. I got the I got the whole ring light. All right, I think we covered most of that wing. We can come back with some other colors. Now, you know what? Let's do it right now while we got it. We got it nice and wet. All right. So, we have the underside of our wing. Same thing. You can see how we did kind of the black there on the tops, but the bottom might be something different. A little more kind of underbellyish. Let me get like this orange brown. Let's set that down. It's going to be a little interesting, just with a bright color, but let's grab a little bit of that. It's not my, this is not my tablecloth. All right, grab a little bit of this. Let's just see how. Just work some of that in there. What have you been working on lately, like, Chuck? I saw you had this commando screen. Yeah, well, that's a, I'm still working through the remaining commandos that I have, and uh -huh. uh, that guy uh, is oh, nice. actually. Yeah. I got extra sculpts on these so I can make the different variations so I can Show up at Louis and get those <laughs> 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 
Yeah, he's a great book. Don't feel too bad because he won Best Painted in the last book yeah. that we did with the same exact teams. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy with the books. Uh, we'll go over and the bad things, yellow and everything. So, I'm um, really happy with the books. Uh, the guy that was running the books, that's what he's doing. He had painted up the drums. <laughs> Facebook, um, and they came out from there. Yeah. And they really have them too, because that's yeah. the best contrast I've seen. That's primarily what I've been using too. Um, fine and two, and then the bright blue and the face with that, it does the shade. Just dry brush on some white, yep. and I hit it with the blue moon, and it does a really good yeah. highlight shade definition. Pretty much, like some of those tackles colors. Yes, they're very different. I mean, yeah. it's part of it is really learning which kind of like the consistency. Yes, yeah. so, because some are more almost like just like a mm -hmm. some of them are going to be thicker. Oh man, the wings are like three fourths of this model. <laughs> it reminded me, there, there's a model that just came out, I believe it was yesterday. Another for, paint night? Um, no, or, for, uh, I was going to say, the Crisis Protocol model. They released a box for this, this model called Malika. Mm -hmm. It's got these gigantic wings, and it kind of looks like the Chimera. Big wings like that, the span, like makes yeah. the model so much bigger, yeah. So much more painting space, but a lot more kind of to play around with. But, yeah, show me. Shane's getting another model from a different game, Marvel Crisis Protocol, that just uh, came out yesterday, and apparently it's got a similar kind of wingspan. Okay, we can really get this on. I like the orange on the underside here. I go for the same thing on the other side. Doesn't have to be crazy. Definitely want the outside, though, to look nice. And I think these kind of claws at the end will probably do black. Just doing the base coat for now. Got oh, all your shipments got pre-ordered. Oh, that's a good <laughs> suffering from success. This gigantic model of a guy riding this big giant tiger thing with huge wings. It kind of looks like that's cool. It's a beautiful. See. Okay. You know, there was a while where I was I was worried the WizKids was going to stop making these because it was like. Early 2021, I think we got the, the Ogre Zombie, and then uh, the Red Slad, I think we did. And then it kind of looked like dry, like shipping, you know, that was kind of when, right when everybody was having problems getting product out. And I think we were going to do the Bone Claw, and then I got like radio silence from Matt, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> And then, all, like, out of the blue, there was, like, four new ones. Like, I think there's still one that I haven't done for the store. I think the Ice Troll is out, too. That's kind of a smaller one, though. But they're, like, they're really pumping them out now. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this stuff is about back order. But yeah. Even the big guys, like, you know, there's, you know, especially, like, GW2 and Terminator For sure. All right, I think we got all the prime spots covered. Yes. Let's go back into that orange-brown and kind of have some fun with the underside here. 
A little easier to show, not covered by the body. A couple t there have been a couple paints in some of these kits where it feels like as it might as well be a wash, but it's not marketed as a wash. Similar to what you were talking about, some of the viscosity. You dip it. <laughs> I've heard horror stories you're not, that you're not supposed to dip it in wash. I've done the, uh, I've just done the application with a brush, but. Uh, <laughs> It works. All right. I'm going to go back to these points with the black and just kind of define those. It's nice and defined. I think there's an opportunity to throw some more color on here. I'm going to open the chocolate brown too, keeping it dark still. Just a couple spots on this wing that look a little forced with the black. Just kind of go right back over with the burnt red. Just kind of smooth it out a little bit. And then let's check out this chocolate brown. Let's see how that looks. Just a little bit. dirty look in some spots, definitely coming through. Touch more black. Chuck's already on the body. There's definitely a there's definitely a, a pacing. Sometimes it's hard to nail. Yeah. Yeah. I always like to try going back and forth for just for the kind of the stream, you know. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's hard to... The detail is always kind of exciting. It's always nice to try and mix that in. All right, what is this? Let's see. Yeah, the red kind of goes... Yeah, okay. Let's put this burnt red right to where the wings end. It does. It does stay pretty wet. Probably just like, I mean, it's just a lot of surface. But it's great because like I went back to the, I was on the second wing. I went back to the first wing. It was still wet to add some brown. Yeah, uh, it's this is definitely the model that feels the morphiest because it's like you know you're going into three different it's like you're painting like four different creatures. Let's start with chocolate brown here for the body. Vallejo, yeah. First time I when I when I got into painting, I I used the army painter because they had a couple of those. They had a couple kits, you know. But yeah, Vallejo for sure. I mean. It's not like specialized stuff that you can't use anywhere else, you know? Yeah, definitely like the base colors they give you.
All right, getting the chocolate brown across most of the body and going to give us, while it's still wet, going to give us an ability to kind of work in some lighter colors. where we're hold. When I paint, what's in the background? Yeah, I usually have something like ambient plan. It's usually... That's a good one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, usually when I'm... I mean, if I'm painting something big like a monster I'll usually stream it and so like right now I have like a four hour ambient thing that I can hear in one ear going on too but then yeah otherwise if I'm like painting a character getting ready for campaign or something I'll put I don't know I'll just go down like YouTube holes yeah. for sure all right giving us a little more kind of depth here got some of the orange brown Music, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It is, it's, yeah, I think so. It's the artistic side versus the right brain, which is like objective. I gotta get this done. All right, a little bit of the, we got the cork brown open now. Try and work some of that in. Definitely can make this much brighter. I'm gonna work in a lot of this cork brown. I 
Oh my god, that would drive me crazy. Yep, starting to find the tight spots for sure. All right, I think that we, as we get to the main, we'll do a cork brown base. Really kind of defining the heads. I don't want it to look like it's just kind of like bodies going right into the head, especially since there's three different heads. Definitely encourages three different colors, or color sets. I'm almost thinking of doing, yeah, I was thinking of doing a kind of a green gray for the goat. I think the dragon part I'm going to keep red, but I'm almost thinking about using some white for the goat too. If you can keep it really bright. Oh, it's a ram, I think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> goats are nasty too.
little more cork brown here, blending right into the paws. Definitely found the tight spaces. Some of these spots in the lion's mane, hard to get into, or like under, behind the ears. All right, we got a pretty distinct color here on our, on our lion from the body. So that's kind of gonna be the, the goal. Maybe work a little bit of brown in there. A little bit of darker brown, but not too much. Definitely want the head to kind of shine out from kind of the rest of the body. A little bit of this brown, and let me just touch in a couple places. Give it a little shadow.
All right, we're about an hour in. It's looking pretty good. I was anticipating about two hours for this one. All right, we got a tail and dragon head that we can certainly match kind of with the wings. Let's go ahead and finish that. Back into the burnt red. A lot of little detail, little bumps and kind of ridges here. So definitely don't want to lay it laid on too thick and obscure any of that. Really good printing quality from WizKids. That's another thing. You try and buy like third party and you'll just see like fingers stuck together. Not here. They're pretty close. One of them, <clears throat> there's multi-purpose and fine detail. Fine detail is just a little thinner, but you can definitely kind of just go back and forth if you don't want to, like, lose a color on one brush. How do you get on the inside of this tail? <laughs> this is definitely not something that is camera friendly. This wing. Yeah, it's pretty subtle. It gives you an opportunity. I mean, we can add kind of the lighter red stuff, too, still on it, but I like the depth. It really doesn't take much at all. out don't want to scratch the body with red
Okay, we got that tail red. And let's try and do... Same thing, let's try and get some black there, at least on the outside. Soon, it's gonna be me. Yeah. <laughs> Work that black right in there. Similar, you can see that in the camera here. See that black? See how it kind of looks like the wings outside? Yeah. And we covered all of it almost. That's the other thing. How many times do I have to go back to red? So far, it's only been one. You know what's harder than painting these things is taking a picture of them. The camera shows all the spots, if there are any. I've been told that sh taking a picture of these is just as hard <laughs> as painting them. Yeah, it does. You can do all this light. All right. That's by looks. I mean, it's nothing. It's nothing flashy. But I like you know. So we use the chocolate brown here, a little bit of the cork brown. We get the kind of the dark brown as a base, and it opens up the opportunity to throw in some of like the pale sand basic skin tone here, especially around the underside, where it might be a little tanner. <clears throat> yeah. Meanwhile, we got the lion's head, pretty pretty uh, out there. <clears throat> gonna finish up the. Let's see, I think for for the ram, we're definitely gonna do the, go towards the green. So let's do the dragon's head red. Let's keep that theme. And again, little details here on the ridges of the neck. Don't want to, don't want to overload. One thing about this one is I think that we can get away without having to try and do eyes. Maybe the lion. We do have a white.
almost done here with the dragon head. And then we can put some blacks on it and go to the goat. How's yours looking? A little bit of light brown there on the tail. Is that green on the back? The back legs? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, keeping it all kind of in theme with each one is. Yeah, hooves. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. <laughs> hooves in the back, paws in the front, and the tail. So that's all three. It's not just the heads. You got all three aspects on the body, too. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Tip of the wings on the black. Streaks. Yeah. The defined streaks are pretty cool. Yeah, I, the streaks looked cool. I, I think, I, yeah, I ended up just kind of working it all in. Like, uh, except for the the um, the little claws at the top. Right, it's like the under skin. Yeah, I did the orange brown, but it, it's, it doesn't come through that much. It probably is an opportunity to do like basic skin tone. Probably can make it look a little more vulnerable under the wings. All right, I think it's time to tackle the goat. Uh, let's see, remind me. Green, gray, and German camouflage beige. Hmm. I think we'll start with the green, gray. It's the base. And then come back through. Missed the hook here.
All right, green, gray. How green? Oh yeah, that's good. It's like lighter, just a light swampy gray, a green. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> That's huge. They make so many models with huge wingspans now. Wings are fun to paint. I get it. Especially in that game, they have things that yeah, yeah, bonus points if it's actually like a good piece to use also. <laughs> like in game. It <laughs> I don't know how often they make like huge like figures that's clearly just for the painting but like in game it's not doesn't make sense to use in terms of like the points levels that they have in that game I think that's one of the highest yeah makes sense you mind if I uh, show camera because we got Chuck here painting alongside me. Here's what he's got so far. See the, so he's definitely got the black streaks kind of more defined down the wing. Looks awesome. Similar kind of more orange on the body there, looking into the lion's head. And then everything else looking pretty good. I like it. Yeah, looks super good. I'm going to use the palette. <clears throat> These are fun. I'm telling you, monsters, there's no wrong answers. Yeah. Don't know what you want to paint. Pick up this nut monstrosity. Make those horns stark white, I think. Yeah, the screen gray is pretty dull but should be able to kind of flare it out with some of this camouflage. Doesn't sound like camouflage would be the right color to make something stand out, but we're going to try. <laughs> yeah, that's like almost a tan. Let's just, let's just try and work some of that in there while it's still wet. So looking at the goat head, we have that kind of green gray on there just a little bit. Don't, taking some off on the paper towel. Don't really need much at all. And we just kind of just sprinkle it across. Add a little more depth. Mm -hmm. Yep, hit a little hit too much of a mistake for you. Hit it with some water. Just wet the brush, really. It takes it right off, if it, depending on how quickly you do it. <clears throat> oh. Don't need a palette for these. You really just work everything on it. It's very forgiving. Um, I was going to make these horns white, but would they be white? I feel like they'd be a little dirtier than that. What do they do here? Yeah, it's kind of like a tan. They actually, in the, on the sample, they do like a gray and then just kind of like white flares of highlights. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's like pretty dark actually, almost black. But that doesn't that doesn't make sense with what we got going on here. Mm. Let's try. 
Well, cork brown's what we use for the lion. I don't want that to kind of blend. Green gray for the for the goat, yeah. I think I'm gonna do. Yeah, right. I'm gonna do pale sand. I think. Let's, let's do a base coat of the pale sand. Not quite white. The off white. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that'll work for that'll work for what we have. This horn, though, like some of these pieces come so close to the like, you notice how the tail swings in around the paw? It's like so close. They know exactly what they're doing. I don't even know how you get on the underside of this horn. Yeah. Who's gonna see that? Yeah, I mean that's part of it too. It's... Sometimes I get so lost in the details, but nobody's even gonna notice. That. Right. <laughs> right. No one's gonna notice. I always said uh, there. Every time I like finish a model. Like, this looks great, and then I flip it to an angle I never flipped it to, and, like, half of it's yeah. unpainted or something like There's a big piece. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Taking a picture of it definitely shows the little gray spots, just little pieces. All right, I get it. I get it. Snapchat blown up. No one's going to look under the Green Goblin's glider. That could just be... Yeah, I get it. And then there's some, like, I had a Warlock model that I loved to paint. Like, pretty much the one on the shelf. You know, the one that's like the two-pack? The cape. It's impossible to paint the underside, the underside of it. But it flares out, you know? So it's like, you have to paint it. But the way it gets under the back... You can't just like stop. <laughs> capes are a pain. Monsters don't have capes. Chuck, you can probably have seen this. I, I painted up the, the Corsairs for Guilty a couple months ago. Almost all of those guys have capes, and they're all different. And, uh, it, was, it was kind of funny. Like, all the time I would spend on each guy, like, depending upon the, the, the part of the cape that's <laughs> sticking out a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. I think that everything's painted. I mean, obviously, we got to do the base. We'll do the base, too. What base do they use? Grays or browns here? These? Like a, oh, it's like kind of like a stone floor. We could do that. I usually do like a muddy, swampy base. We can do that. Um, definitely like what you did, Chuck, with the orange on the lion's mane. I want to try and work some of that in on mine. A little bit of the orange brown. Let's just see how this kind of plays. Take a little bit more. Okay. 
The orange brown can act kind of like a little bit of a highlight here off the cork. One thing that I s will struggle with sometimes is I my light source is everywhere. You know, that's the other one. How do you gotta be consistent with where it's coming from? But they're just somewhere. It looks great everywhere. Here we go. There we go. A little orange there. Yeah, that brings. That's really all you need. It brings it up pretty nicely. I haven't used fine detail yet, actually. There really, I really haven't felt... There have been... I think every model I've used it in a couple places. Um, like, I, I guess pretty much clothing. I'll use fine detail. Like, Dire Troll, Ogre Zombie, they had a loincloth, you know, at least, or something like that, where you gotta kind of, like, get around the waist. I haven't really felt the need to do that here. I know I missed... I know I got gray spots on this mane, though. And it's gonna be at the front of the picture. looking good a little more orange highlight here and then maybe into some maybe a little bit of the 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 pale sand or the basic skin tone Open my basic skin tone. Alright, I think now body looks alright, lion's mane looks good. I'm going to try and tackle the dark vermilion on the wings, see what we can do with the highlights. 
This is going to be... We'll use fine detail for this. This is like, you know, one wrong st stroke. And it can just look like uh, all of a sudden this was 7th grade art. Alright. A little bit of this. I'm going to dry brush it. Take some dark vermilion. I'm going to take most of it off. And I'm just going to kind of go along these spines and see what kind of comes off the brush here. Yeah, I need a little more. Okay, there we go. All right, it's subtle, but it's there. All right, we got we got some highlights on the wings here. Very, very subtle. You can go a little more with it. Is that a wow? That's an unpainted spot. The camera shows all, but uh, you can definitely go more with some of this highlight. But I think it likes catch some of this bright red here. 
Here, let's let's touch that spot up. There we go. Yeah, right, let's put some vermilion on the dragon head also. Two colors we haven't opened yet. We still have the old rose, which is kind of like a pinkish. And then we have the white, which I think we can put on the horns for, the, uh, for a ram. How chunky is this white? Looks pretty good. A lot of whites can get chunky on you. Let's try that now. Let's check some of this white. Well, that's a lot. Take some off and let's pop it on here. Just a little bit. Doing it right, it shouldn't look really that much different. I'm going to see it brighter in a few spots. The hardest part is this transition from the goat's head to the horns. Going to make sure that that's pretty well defined. Let's go back into the pale sand. Let's really try and round that out. Still on the fine detail brush for these. Yeah, that looks much better. All right, into the vermilion, let's highlight some of this dragon head. Let's really make it kind of pop out. We can be a little more liberal here. Take some of it off, and let's just see what sticks. Okay. Keeps the integrity of the, kind of the black there on the neck, but you can see some of it kind of comes out. Let's see if that'll focus for you. Uh, it's tough. Definitely see some of that red come out.
Coming up on two hours. Um, let's see, where's what else do I want to do for highlights here? I think that we can almost be done with the bottle here and then start on the base. Um, the goat. Let's see what we can put on the goat and the lion's head still. Nothing too crazy. Let's get the multi-purpose out. And lion head, I think that we can put some pale sand. Uh, maybe some basic skin. Let's get some basic skin. It's like a pinkish orangish. Weird. Definitely interesting color. Let's just see what that looks like. Just kind of brush some of it on. Uh-huh. A little too much. Don't want to go... Don't want to overpower... A little too much here on the get that orange brown to kind of offset it a little bit but it definitely brings out some of the fur what's catching the light back into the basic skin tone just taking a lot just most of it off the brush really not too much Oop, that's the pale sand. Don't need that. Basic skin tone with the orange brown coming off the cork brown gives this kind of the, the highlights there. See, actually it looks really good in the camera there. You can kind of see the kind of the white coming out. We didn't even use white. Okay, let's look at the goat. Let's tackle the goat. Just for the sake of time, let's tackle the goat head, see what else we want to use. We covered this with the green-gray. Let's try and get some of this, uh, oh, this actually, yeah, the German camouflage. I'll go to the fine detail brush for this, just because it's a smaller head. And because I'm starting, my multi-purpose is starting to fray just a little bit. Give me some of that camouflage. Let's see if we can't continue to kind of pop this. Just kind of work, work it right in. Alright, I think we are done with our monster. We can try some base. You can obviously spend hours on this. There's just so much opportunity to continue. But I think that we got a good amount of depth here and we applied some highlights. It's definitely very much so a dark model uh, still. But... Kind of like a dirty monster. Okay, let's look at our base. Here is... Here is our Chimera. Let's 
see some of that kind of light underbelly, a little more cork brown there underneath. We have the wings. We had kind of, we, we used some of that orange brown to kind of give it some pinkish, some more kind of soft, more vulnerable kind of looking skin, and then kind of the rough black on the top of the wings, some vermilion highlight. Okay, and those horns pop right out too. All right, this is our base. This is going to be pretty easy. It's much smaller than a lot of the other bases that we've worked with before. And it's not attached, so, like, we can just absolutely go to town on this one. Um, let's do... We're going to do kind of a darker slate floor. So let's start with the multi-purpose, and I'm just going to... Mm, yeah, I'm going to cover this in black. We are going to do a black base coat. This is where you just break out the roller. Big, the big thing I'm trying to do here is I don't want to see any gray. I'm trying to just cover up all the prime. At the same time, I don't want to paint this like kind of clear, like translucent thing that the manticore sits on. Because that looks that that doesn't look good. That's hard, and it's hard to get out too. You just need to hit it with the water. Hit it with the fingernail. Yeah. Yep. I've seen. I've painted so many like wizard characters where it's like you know they're clearly like casting a fireball or something is like sticking out of their hand and it's that same kind of translucent material and you just you bump it accidentally with a I've even tried to purposely paint some of those with like reds and yellows and it's still like it's hard it's definitely difficult might even be better to just kind of if you're going to paint those just hit it with like a kind of a wash give it like a tinge but you can't really can't really convey a color. Luckily, we don't have to with this one. We just want to avoid it. I like how this wing sticks up when it's standing. That's a really cool pose. This is where a base holder is fantastic. We're going to get some black on our fingers, but that's okay. You can get one of those if you're interested in having outside tools from the paint kit. You're going to pay more of these. Citadel base holder is like $10. I think the XL one, if you're doing a lot of monsters, might be like $15 or $20. But it's... I, I literally tried to... When I started painting, I tried to do like the workarounds, like, you know, tape them to dowels. <laughs> it's just worth spending the 10 bucks on the base holder. It's so nice. At this point, I think I have like three. You're working on an army and you're swapping in between. Oh, that's a good idea. 3D printed base holders? Yeah, that's smart. That makes sense. You just kind of need the spring or whatever. Bottle caps? Yep. Oh, that's smart. There's a lot of ways to do it. Remember, I used the, uh, I didn't use the tack. I thought I could get away with, like, those little kind of button, double-sided tape things from Michaels. That did not work. They were not sticky enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the poster tack doesn't work. Shoot, I hit the uh, I hit the center with some black.
Okay, we have our base totally black. And now, I love bases because you can really just throw everything at it. Let's give it some green gray. We can give it some, uh, yeah, we can give it some chocolate. Br well, actually, chocolate brown might, might not come through. Some green gray. Let's hit it with maybe some cork brown and then just get lighter and lighter until we kind of get there. Let me see if this comes off with water. Nope, fingernail it is. We can hit that later. All right, we have our black base. Mm-hmm. Let's do green-gray next, and I'm just going to slather it on. No particular rhyme or reason. Actually, it'd be a good idea, though. It'd be nice if this was dry. I don't have my hair dryer with me. All right, we just kind of throw this everywhere. Work it into the black. Okay, see, definitely a little more depth already. And we can just keep going lighter. There's probably two more layers of, of light that I'd like to do here that we could see. So we have the... Hit it with the green-gray, and now it kind of has that kind of like shale, like in the sun, on the river kind of look. And the way they do it is kind of like a... Almost like a... You know, it's kind of cave-ish. That's kind of in line with what we're doing. All right, now we're going to be a little more gentle. I'm going to stay away from the browns. Let's keep using kind of this greenish gray. Let's clean this brush here. And let's get into the, the camouflage. And this one's going to be a little more subtle. I'm going to get in not too much. And let's just find some spots to put that in. good depth right now. The last thing I'm going to add is just a little bit of white, and we should have a, a pretty solid floor. A little bit of white, and this is where you can mess it up. So, just a little bit. We're going to dry brush some white on here. White comes through so, so clear. So, you don't really need any There you go. There's your cave floor. It's a little, uh, here. Oh, there we go. Light kind of makes it, uh, ring light kind of makes it a little more exaggerated, but. <laughs> There's tons of things you can put on the base also, like little rocks or little shrubs or whatever else you want to get. But, um, we'll use the base for now. And I think, from the purpose of the stream, I think we have a completed model. Oh, no, wait. Found a couple, just got to touch up a couple spots here. Let's grab some of the brown. Can I get, I get under this hind quarter here? And anything else we think we missed? There is a little bit of gray kind of where the base goes into the model. We can just 
Throw chocolate brown there too. Okay. And we will call it here. Alright, so well, it's gonna be hard to display because it doesn't it doesn't snap in. There we go. Oh, so yeah. So does it have a little tilt to it? How does yours lay on it? Yours kind of like this. heading out? Alright, I'm just about to cut it. I think the... Yeah, nice to meet you too, Shane. Appreciate it. Yeah. So yeah. Alright guys, here we go. Completed model here. Once again, sponsored by Just Games Rochester. We're here in store. Had a great time. People physically painting with us. Chuck, do you mind if, if we uh, show yours one last time before we cut it off? Chuck's is still a work in progress, but uh, definitely. Look at this wing. Look at these wings. That is some good detail. I really like the emphasis on the black there as opposed to kind of putting it kind of everywhere. Yeah, it's it's threatening. It's pretty scary looking. Um, and I like the orange. Yours, definitely a little brighter lion. A little, I like the orange kind of on the front. And then he used the green, kind of like the goat, because we have the hooves, the green on the back. And that just the way it kind of like blends together is super good too. That is definitely hard to pull off. That's awesome. All right, thanks Chuck. All right, guys, that'll be it. Um, we will have this as a VOD on the YouTube channel. That'll be up this week. But otherwise, um, thanks for indulging me and in looking at some painting today. And we will catch you guys later. See ya.